there's a download that you can download. It's the adult, I call it the adult words of math because I was a literacy person. So these are the words you need to know, like you need to know but and 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 the. You need to know these series of ideas about addition when we're talking about the trajectory of learning to add. When we talk about fluency, remember we're always talking about is it, you know, are you building conceptual understanding of what you're doing with numbers? Are you teaching in a way that's concrete, pictorial, and abstract and making those connections? Um, are students flexible and efficient? Are they um, accurate? And do they eventually have the instant recall? Um, so I want us to look at the adult words. And the adult words of math, I made it on a, you know, a little kind of pamphlet so you can just see them all. But there's adding zero, that's an idea that you want kids to understand, and adding one, right? And what the research says asks really is that adding one is much easier because when you have no quantity, that's much harder to conceptualize. So adding one to a number and then, and then to teach adding zero. Same with subtraction. Um, counting on adding within five, right? So you're looking to see if kids can add within five. And, you know, in most states, that's actually your fluency. And um, you also want kids to understand that when they see an equation, they're going to start with the big number and count on, which is another level of understanding. Because oftentimes kids will start with whatever add in comes first. Um, and you also want to know, you know, can kids add within 10? So that's important, the adding within 10. Now, then there is, and you guys are going to be able to download all of this. Then there is, can they add 10 to a number? Most kids can do that. That's pretty easy for kids to do, to add 10 to a number. And then you want to know if they can make 10, right? And usually you teach make 10 and then add 10, but kids, kids learn add 10 to a number. For whatever reasons, it's conceptually not that difficult for kids to understand that if I add 10 to single digits, I'm going to get, you know, something between 11 and 19. They get that, or even 20 if I add 10 to 10. Um, and then there's doubles. So, you know, you want to know if kids know their doubles. When you're actually teaching the add within 10 facts, you can look to see if they know their lower doubles, like, you know, within 10. And then doubles plus one. So once they learn their doubles, you know, expanding on that thinking to doubles plus one, and then doubles plus two, and um, then bridging seven, bridging eight, and bridging nine, right? Can they do those things? And so um, this is just another, like that zeroes in on the bridging seven, bridging eight, and bridging nine. Now, the thing I want to say about bridging is it's really something that you want kids to have full understanding of by second grade. Remember, the fluency in first grade is adding and subtracting with intent so that although you're exploring other facts, what you want kids to come away knowing without a doubt is fluency within five in kinder fluency within 10 in first grade, and fluency within 20 in second. And that's the standard for most states. Uh, so, you know, that's what you're really, really focusing on. That's the big takeaway. So this bridging 7, 8, 9, I often see people trying to teach it like, you know, December now of the, you know, first grade. And the kids can't even add within five. So, yes, this is part of the journey, but it, it, if they can't add within five, then why are you teaching bridge seven? <laughs> They're going to get to bridge seven, but first they have to add within five, and then add within ten, and then bridge, right? So it is sequential in the sense that you need to know your combinations of ten to really bridge 
because, and you need to know how to compose and decompose numbers to bridge. Because if you say, what's seven plus five, kids need to know, well, I can break five into three and two, and I'm gonna go seven plus three is 10, plus two more is 12. So they really do need to know how to add within 10, and they need to know to compose and decompose numbers before they go on to bridge seven, eight, and nine. So with that said, you know, what do you do? Well, there are board games. And these are all different kinds of board games that you can play with kids. And I'm going to give you the link and you can go and you can download them and have them. Um, but there's games where you're teaching kids to use the associative property, right? And so if I see four plus two plus six, I can go six plus six. And I know that's the devil's. If I see two plus two plus four, I can go two plus two is four plus four is eight. Or if I see three plus one plus seven, I can go three plus seven is 10 plus one more. So there are games where, you know, we want them to use strategy. There's visual games where they're adding like 10 and some more. So 10 and three is gonna be 13. They're visual. So this is a game for, you know, you can play lots of different ways, adding 10 to a number. You can also play how many more to 20 because these are on 20 frames. Um, and then there's games where they're working with like a particular number. So like in this board game, they're working with five. So like, and it's strategy. So when they're in that intervention group, you're saying five plus five, what kind of fact is that? You want kids to tell you it's doubles. Five plus four, what kind of fact is that? Oh, well, if five plus five is 10, then five plus four, that's nine. Um, and then five plus three, oh, I could count on. Five plus two, I could count on. Five plus one, I could count on. Five plus zero, well, we know when you add zero to any number, it stays the same. Five take away zero, oh, well, we know when you take away zero, the number stays the same. Five take away five, oh, we know if you have five and you take away all of it, it's zero. So the point is, as they're playing this game, they are talking about the strategies that they're using. And then here's another one where it's using eight and they're doing the same thing. Now, you also want to put posters up in your room, and I have these, and they're in the um, downloads, so you can download these. But there's there's strategy and model posters. So I would put the strategy posters on one side and the models on another, because remember, there's a difference between strategies and models. Strategies are what you do with the numbers. Oh, I use doubles plus one. A model is how you showed it. I showed it on the Wreck and Wreck. So, these posters, um, I think they should be up in the classroom like as your evergreen posters, just like you keep the ABC chart up all year. So I can bridge 10. And then it has examples. And then it shows, like, if I was at 8, I would jump 2. If I was adding 8 plus 6, I would jump 2. And then I would jump 4 more. I love these posters. And they have two little kids on them. So, um, you know, there's just tons of them. There's this one which is I can count on the number pack. Now that is a poster where you're looking at the models. So um, I can talk about it with a friend, right? That's like, how could you go about solving it? What's one way you could solve it? And it shows the model of it on a number pack. When you add zero to, to a number, the number stays the same. So that's an idea that we want kids to know and be able to articulate. Remember that the research says kids should be able to explain their strategies. So some kids will know, right, how to get at the answer. They'll understand the concept, but they won't be able to articulate it. You want to work on that. You want kids to be able to articulate what they are doing. When you add one to a number, it's the next number, right? You want kids to understand that idea so that they're not going one, two, three, four, and then one more, that's five. You want them to know, oh, four plus one is five. Five plus one is six. You you want them to understand what it means to add one to a number. I can think about neighbor numbers. You want um, kids to understand that if the numbers sit side by side, that they're neighbor numbers. And so you're going to have a doubles and then one more. So four plus five is four plus four, and then one more. Six plus seven is six plus six, and then one more. And there's a poster that helps kids understand that. I can count using a number chart. That's a model, 
right? I can count on when I see one, two, or three. That's a strategy. And then there's, I made a poster that just talks about all the strategies. I can use a strategy to think about it. Doubles, make 10, doubles plus one, doubles plus two, you know, et cetera. It talks about the strategies. All right, so we've looked at games and we've looked at some posters. And now we're going to look at some flashcards. These also are available for download. So I made a bunch of strategy flashcards, and I'm really excited about them because you can do play lots of things. So in this one, it says, when you see one, two, or three, remember to just count forward from the big number. So this is two plus 10. They can go to 10 and then count up two. And then, but they can play it as a concentration game, as a match game. You know, if they play concentration, they'll turn all of the cards like this over. And then they have to try to match, you know, they have to try to find the match. Or you could just play match where it's all up front and they can see it and they're moving it together. Or you can play go fish with them, right? I mean, there's lots of things that you can do with them. Or you can, you can print them out and just make them into like a regular flashcard, strategy flashcards with the problem on one side and the answer on the back, right? So... And then here's some others. I made some with fingers because, you know, that's in the kinder. They're using their fingers. So I made flashcards uh, with the fingers. And I want you to notice what I did with these flashcards as well. I made them commutative. So on one side, it's one plus four. And on the other side, it's four plus one. We really have to integrate the properties into the teaching of addition and subtraction. It should not be just a side story, one lesson, and then we move on. It should be something that we're talking about continually. And so um, then there's this example. Numbers that sit side by side on the number line are doubles plus one, and it just shows that. And it shows visually how it's a doubles plus one. So these are all things that you'll have and be able to use. Then I made flashcards that are number bond flashcards. So again, kids can play different games with these. Now, I want you to notice that the flashcards or, you know, the visual practice cards are um, more and they go from simple to complex. So they have visual scaffolds, but like this doesn't. I mean, this is, this is a visualization, right? Because it's still kind of organizing it in a way that kids can think about breaking apart the number. But it's different than having a flashcard like this where you actually have the number line and you're showing like, you know, eight plus two, you start at eight and you can count up and um, you can, you, you know, you get to 10. Or these um, have the, um, the chips and these have the dice. So you can see, again, it's commutative. One plus zero is the same as zero plus one. Or I also made vertical, because I want kids to be able to see that. So some of the flashcards are horizontal, some of the flashcards are vertical. These are like one of the hardest, you know, a more challenging level, because it's just the numbers. There's no scaffold. So there's cards with kids. There's cards with chips and cubes and all of the stuff that we use with the kids. And then there's just straight, you know, these flashcards. So I want you to think about what we've talked about in this video. We have talked about the adult words of math. We have talked about the idea of using games and posters and flashcards to reinforce those concepts throughout the year.